Lake have um, a good experience finishing the projects this weekend. Uh, so uh, maybe I could schedule the, the weather so it was colder on the weekend before the projects instead of on the day after the project. Um, I'll try to do that next year, I guess. Um, um, so, I, so, so everyone here or their partner is turned into projects, so. Okay, so um, I will try and read these and provide feedback. Um, probably not by Wednesday, but maybe by Wednesday, um, uh, but definitely by next week, Monday. Um, um, I think so, so unless so something comes up. But um, so if, so, so I think kind of a, like a giving and, and you listening to feedback is important. So if, uh, so as, as I mentioned on the, on the full project um, description, that if I take off points, I will allow you to make up half the points you lost. If there's something I say that you should have done um, that you could have could have made up those points. Um, so, um, but I'm really looking forward to reading all the projects I've been, you know, seeing the intermediate stuff along the way, and so it'll be cool to see what happens next. Um, so, the next thing is that you have you have um, you have homework due on Wednesday. Um, it should be. It should be pretty straightforward. Um, if you've used MATLAB before, it's, um, it, um, I don't think it should be too hard. A few people have, have done it already. Um, so, um, so if there, if, um, if there are issues, let me know. There, there, there might be one place where I described a process, which is. Um, the thing I ask you to do is 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 not exactly the same as how it's it's implemented in practice. Um, th this was brought to my attention this morning, and I haven't had a chance to look at it too carefully. Um, if you've done it already, then that's fine. I'll still take that for, for credit. I may make some small updates um, tonight to the assignment, but it shouldn't change anything much structurally um, about what you do. Um, so, um, so, so I may send out a. A minor modification tonight, um, but it shouldn't, you know, it should really change very much of the, the assignment. Um, so the other thing is, the last part of the project will actually be a poster um, that we'll all do, and uh, so it'll be one poster per group. It'll be like not not a huge poster, like two feet by three feet, um, and uh, so um, so so this. Um, so, uh, uh, and, and I'll talk more about the details of the poster on Wednesday. I figure most of you probably want to break from the, the project for, for a bit, and you'll probably want to look at the homework. But hopefully the poster shouldn't be too much work, but it's a good way to, to communicate. And then the last day of class, somewhere we'll have like a big poster presentation, and you'll get to see what everyone else is working on as well. So that should be, should be pretty cool. Um, OK. Um, so, um, so today we're going to talk about PageRank. Um, so who, so who here has not heard of PageRank? Okay. So, 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 so this is, um, so, um, who here knows how PageRank actually works? The old version. <coughs> the old version. <coughs> Google had an info section in the campus, so they spoke about it. Oh, okay. Oh, cool. uh, so they didn't give out all the details, but they spoke a little bit about how the initial version worked. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so so I'll talk about the initial version and I'll gradually build up the, the techniques and kind of, uh, the, they, it's, it's, it kind of constantly has to be tweaked a little bit because there's this battle between spammers and between Google. And, and then how they actually use PageRank is actually also uh, um, a little bit mysterious because they, they're they doing some um, uh, um, some security by obscurity um, in some sense. So they don't want to give away all the secrets. Uh, but, the, uh, but the main structural idea is there. And, and this is an important idea which people have used for, uh, uh, for other applications. So I saw recently, like a few weeks ago, some some paper that got that got press in it was either like the New York Times or, or in something like that where they said they were using like a PageRank algorithm 
in the body to help determine how cancer spreads, something like that. And by, by knowing what pay drink was and throwing this in as a buzzword in their paper, it really had nothing to do with pay drink. Really had to do with Markov chains, but but they were able to get all this press, right? And and they didn't get attacked because they actually used it correctly. Um, so, so 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 the key concepts behind here will be you know very important and for understanding you know graph structure and and uh, um, all sorts of stuff like that. Okay, so um, so search engines. So um, so how does search engines work? Right? So when you type in a keyword into Google, it gives you a list of pages. Right? So, so how does it quickly return this list of pages? Right? So, so the, um, the basic um, structure for this, um, for to, um, the basic structure to allow this to work quickly is to do something called an inverted index, where um, so, so, so what you do is you um, if you pipe some query, um, so if you type pi, um, um, if, if you type pi into Google, what it does is this word pi has this list of um, um, page one, um, page two, you know, and this list of pages that are s somehow uh, related to the word pi. And so a lot of this is actually uh, um, somewhat pre-computed. So there are a lot of common words that people search where, where Google is actually, it, it recomputes what, what, uh, 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 what the search values are ahead of time. Um, and so it can, uh, um, then when you search for a word like pi, it can quickly return what's the top page. It doesn't really have to do much computation. Now, th this, th this is not always entirely true, and this is becoming um, less and less true. Um, so, for, for instance, if you typed in apple pie, um, right, then, then it, will, it, it, it could be that apple pie is, is common enough that it's, it's pre-computed um, these pages um, that you want to look at, and really, most almost like 99% of people, something like, only look at the at the first page, which only has 10 pages on it, right? So they have to store the first 10 pages, and then they can have the other pages stored, but they can maybe do some computation at at, at that point when you click on, you know, see more pages. So really, only they need the first 10 pages. Um, that they're actually going to show you to be really quickly um, to access. But so with Apple Pie, it may have a single list, or it could be that there are these two lists. There's um, um, there's one list by Apple, um, which probably has pages um, like um, like Apple. Um, dot com, right? Which which doesn't have anything to do with Apple Pie. Right, but it's got this longer, these longer two lists, which are much longer. And then to to do the result for apple pie, it somehow does a merging of these two lists. Um, so, and, and then there are other things like if you're <coughs> one thing they'll they'll do is if you're in a certain location and there's an apple pie store down the road, they may say, oh, there's an apple pie store down the road. You can go and you can buy apple pie, at. and they'll put that in if you're here. But if you're if if you're in a different part of the country, they they're not going to include that. So there are these other local versions of these things as well that they need to merge in. Um, so the so the, this isn't exactly true, but we're gonna we're gonna kind of simplify and think of that there's some keyword and that there's a bunch of pages which are sorted by how relevant they are to this keyword. And this is kind of the real really the basis for how the search engines work and do things quickly. How they kind of merge in these different aspects, the local aspect, the, the, uh, the things that are happening recently in the news, combining multiple strange keywords together quickly. These are all things that um, maybe you learn in a database class on, on, on how to do this, 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 um, these sorts of things quickly. Um, but we'll focus on, given a keyword, how do you rank which pages are important relative to 
this key. So do they just do the intersection for apple and pi, or is it more complicated than just the intersection? Um, it's not. So it's it's not just the intersection. Um, so it's the, there are there are other um, the, there there's there's kind of some black magic going on here too. So an intersection is a very good place to start. But it could be that if one thing, if one word about that that doesn't contain the word pi, but it somehow has to do with pi, you know, but has the word apple in it, then you would say, okay, but that's good, even though it wasn't in the list, and you would somehow you would you would know this somehow. Um, so part of how they combine this is part of the is part of the black magic um, behind the. the um, um, behind Google search engine. Um, so the, the part page rank is going to go into this ranking function. And it's kind of the key, the key element of it that really set Google apart from a lot of these other um, techniques which came before, which, which did not use page rank. And so now this is some key component in what they do, but, but, they, uh, 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 but they don't tell you exactly how they use it because then people can kind of game the systems in certain ways. Um, so, all right. So, so, so I'm not going to spend any more time on the inverted index. But what we're going to do is try to think, given given a word like pi, how do we determine which pages are most important uh, relative to this query? Okay, so, so what's the so um, pre Google? Um, um, there are a lot of these. Um, there, there, there are this large number of search engines, and there were more um, popping up all the time, and they were kind of slow. I, I, I don't know if people remember the internet was actually pretty slow, and you'd have to wait for these search results. And, and they didn't always work that well. Um, there are companies like um, Alta Vista, right? There was Lycos. Um, um, there was InfoSeq. Um, um, so these names ring a bell, maybe. You know, like I, I, when I was preparing notes for this, I, you know, I looked up to remember these, and they all like, oh yeah, I remember that, but. But I haven't thought of them in a long time because no one uses these anymore, right? So, so we'll start first start by kind of talking through what these companies were doing, and then we'll see how, how Google used PageRank to improve upon this and kind of blow these out of the water. Um, okay, so if if you were to look at a page and you wanted to know whether it was related to pi, how would you how would you try and do this? Like, what's the simplest thing you would think? Right, right. Um, so this was the first thing that I did. On um, that they did, they they say um, count um, how many times um, pi is on page. So, so, so then, kind of the basic form of this inverted index would look like they would calculate every page that had the word pi on it, and then they would sort them by saying um, they, would, they, would look at, they would look at a vector of all the words on the page and use the cosine distance between the word count on this page and um, just the word pi. Um, so they'll use the cosine distance. Um, And so when we were talking about um, locality sense of hashing, right? This was cosine distance was one of the was one of the distances that you could use with locality sense of hashing. And so you could return all of the pages which were um, if you built kind of a vector representation of all the words on the page, you could quickly return all the pages which tended to have a high similarity, and then the ones that were the top you could sort them, right? You could sort the ones with the highest value for pi. And so a lot of the early search engines were built on this technology, right? So that's part of the reason why I spent part of the class. This was like these 
locality sense of hashing and cosine distance were some of the technologies that really were um, very important for understanding pages on, on, the, uh, on the internet. And I think there's some aspect of this which is still you know, used in search engines today, but it's mixed in with other kind of uh, things that you also look at. Um, okay, so if, if this is how your search engine works, and so early search engines actually work like this. So if you wanted to sell Pi on the internet, um, how would you, so what sort of thing would you do to your web page? I would put pi 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 and make it white color in the background so you can't see it, but there's like five million pies written with spaces in it. Right, right. So, so there, there. I don't know if you remember, there were lots of pages that um, that did this. Is so then the spammers, um, what they did is they they put um, pi in um, so um, with the same. Um, color as the background um, many times. So I, I I won't say they'll write it in white because also back then web pages had all sorts of obnoxious colors as the backgrounds, <laughs> right? So it may have been a green page and written in green, um, but it was something in the background so you couldn't really see it. Maybe a very small font. And uh, they put this way at the bottom, or maybe in the header of the web page, right? So something you wouldn't even see when you browse there, but the search engines would see. And they said, oh, if it's in the header, it must be important. And so pages were doing this, and you know, maybe it had nothing to do with it. Now, if this was a great place to buy pie, the search engine said, um, that's great, right? But if, if people really wanted to sell you know, um, you know, their personal web page about how many um, uh, um, about how many digits there are in pi pi, but they wrote this pi, then it's probably not what you're looking for, right? So you could you could drive search engines towards your site, or you could sell, you know, you, you could be selling something else on the internet. Um, but if people search for pi, then they would they would come to your site, and so that wasn't the goal of the search engine. They wanted to make it friendly for the user. So this so they needed to protect against. Pages just doing this. A page that had lots of information about Pi may have been better than this site trying to make money off of it. Um, okay, so so the, the, then as counter to this, they did all sorts of there, there are other sorts of things. So you know you could say that if Pi um, occurs more than um, say. 20% um, of the time, um, um, then ignore. Right? So if the, if the word pi occurs more than 20% of all the words, you say, okay, then they're just trying to fool me. I'm going to, I'm, I'm not going to include this. Right? So, so, so now you, but this 20% may, may be kind of fluctuating, right? You don't always use 20. So they say, ah, oh, 20 is a cutoff. I'm going to do 19. Yes. So you, kind of move this 20 threshold up and down. Or you can think of other sorts of things you would do to kind of look for these sorts of patterns. If it's repeated a bunch of times in a row, then, then, then that's not going to work. Right? So you can think of all sorts of other things. Oh, I was going to say, couldn't they just like uh, read the HTML and, and, the, the, and see what See, see if it's like intentionally hidden because they, I mean, they can grab all that HTML and, and, and parse it out and see, okay, are they trying to? But I guess that would. Yeah, but you can kind of obscure this, right? So you can have it in these weird, um, like maybe this is slightly different than the background color and how do you how do you know? But it's, it's not different enough that you would notice. You can also put JavaScript which generates it and sticks it in the page with DOM injection. Oh yeah, that's true. So the, the, the JavaScript was still early on these yeah. days, but but there were there were ways that they were that they were injecting stuff into their page to try and fool search engines. So but but even if you had these 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 kind of things that you're looking for, which which weren't allowed, there's an even cleverer trick that really got these uh, these search engines mad that, that they had a hard time hard time beating. So what they would do, these pages would do, is they would they wanted to be the top hit for pi. So what they did is they would search for the term pi, they would go to the web pages that had the top hit, and then they would, um, 
and then they would copy their entire HTML of those other pages and put them in their page. Right, so, so what the spam would do, um, um, copy, top, it, um, pages, HTML. Right, so when the, when the, when the, when the search engine was reading the page and indexing it, it would, um, it, it would, it would look and see all the HTML and, and so if you're thinking of the cosine distance, you could think that you have this you have this vector here, and this is the pi vector, okay? And then you have all these other top hits here, and they're not going to be exactly on the pi vector. But if you copy a bunch of them in, they're probably going to average out to be somewhere close. And you don't know exactly what you're searching, but the average of these might be even closer to this pi vector than any of the individuals. And so this was very effective at getting to the, the top of these, these search results for these web pages. Kind of any, independent of any sort of filters they could try to put on it. And there was, there was a, a, a big battle with the filters and they would try to figure out what it was with that and avoid getting blackballed and stuff. And then they started copying the, the, full, the, the full HTML to pages and this kind of made it much harder to kind of filter out these, these, these bad pages. There are, there are lots of pages, they didn't want to do this manually, they had to have fairly simple algorithms how to do this. Right? They're, they're also trying, at the same point, they're also trying to expand uh, how many web pages they could index at the same time. So, and the web was growing very quickly, so they wanted to make it very efficient. So they couldn't put very complicated things in there, but they also, um, but they also wanted to filter out these pages which are trying to fool them. Right? Um, so, so let's see. So 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 how did so how did the web pages how did these search engines actually find all these pages to index? Loops on graphs. What? Just following the links all the way through. Um, you know, would they right. just have like a crawler that would go through and find all the hrefs on the page and just generally build hopefully some sort of binary tree or some sort of tree to represent what they look like? Um, yeah, so um, the, there's this idea of, of a crawler, um, which is this, this kind of bot which you send out to kind of, um, uh, to kind of search the web. And it would, um, it would start at some page, um, and then it would, um, it, it would like click a, um, or it, it would, it would follow um, the hrefs, or, or, or it would follow all the links on the page. And so it's, it, there were either different versions, do they, do they randomly do it, do they always do the first one, do they try and do a depth first search, or do they try and do a, um, a breadth first search. The breadth first, you need to save a lot. Um, if you just care about depth first, then you just, Keep going. You don't really need to save state because you, you just, if you pop back up, you can you know s s just save some spot back instead of that you're going to pop back up to. So so you could more simply um, represent something that did the depth first search, the and the breadth first, then the recursion gets very tricky. You need to spawn a lot of processes. So you did something kind of, um, but but the depth first could get stuck in ways. So you did something kind of in between. So there are lots of versions, but it would it would go from one page, it would follow the hrefs, and then it would um, download, you know, all um, it would um, it would download some um, some signature of the page, right? And the signature was what it would then do the searching over, right? So this could be um, this is, uh, this would be something like, um, like the min hash, right? It would it would do something like create the shingles of the page, then it would it would do the min hash of the page, and it would give you some vector for this web page, and then you would use locality sense of hashing or some version of that in order to quickly build build the index, um, or if, if you don't build the index ahead of time for some more obscure word, then you would actually go and do locality sense of hashing maybe over over some of your data. 
Um, but uh, ideally, you'd want to build the whole, as much of the index ahead of time as you could. Um, hard drives were less cheap then, so this was not always, always the case. Um, okay, so, so these crawlers would crawl around on the web and try and gather up all these pages. And that was how, how these main search engines worked. They would send out these crawlers, try and build some sort of index that somehow was trying to feed the spam with, uh, you know, it was so, somehow just count, you know, how many times the word appeared, but also um, try and filter out certain things that were clearly trying to trick it. Um, but the, 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 there were also these other classes of, of these, um, of these pages on the web, which people used instead of these search engines. Um, there was things like Yahoo, um, and um, um, LookSmart, um, and these took a completely different approach. They they went and they manually built this web page with lots of links on it, right? So the famous story of how um, Yahoo started is a couple of grad students at Stanford started maintaining web pages that they really liked. They so, so just just think of this: if you were in grad school and you spent all day surfing the web and finding cool web pages, and uh, and then putting them on one web page that listed all the cool stuff, and then eventually realizing you can make money off of this and starting a huge business out of it, that would be pretty pretty awesome. So now you're now it just happens is you know either you don't get anything done or someone yells at you for just surfing the web all day. Right, so but but back then you can make a business out of surfing the web yourself, um, and this is how Yahoo started. Um, they they do other stuff now too, but still their main business is this is, is a more personalized front page for everyone, but it's trying to give you all the links on that page. Whereas Google and these other things, they were trying to allow you to search for something specific instead of trying to pre pre compute. So. It, it was a manually curated index. It still built like an index, like what, what these other search engines were doing, um, but it was doing it more manually. And eventually, to make money, they allowed people to pay them to put their web page in a certain category and so forth. And, and so this was, it, this was a completely different model. Um, and it, but it prevented against certain types of spam, which these automatic ways could not. So the, some people thought this was going to be the dominant model. There were going to be these curated things. Um, and that they would work better than, the, than these other search engines because they couldn't control this, the sorts of spam you would get, where you would get a page completely different than what you wanted. Um, and they would, so some of these were looking into ways of, you know, there were manually ways of trying to kind of block out these things. But if you're going to do this, you might as well make this, this manual index. right? Um, so, you know, you would think maybe in, in retrospect, it seems obvious you would try and do this man, you would try and do this so it was automatic. But at the time, there was, there was a, you know, a lot of people bet money on trying, you know, just doing this manually instead. It was going to be too big of a, too hard to, to do this, to do this automatically. Um, okay. So, so this was, you know, the, uh, uh, so this was where the state of the art was. I guess it was, this was like 96 or so uh, 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 when Google came out. Um, I think those were the dates. Um, and so, um, so they had they, they had some some really the kind of the key idea they wanted to capture was instead of just looking at what was on the page, also use which pages pointed to those page, right? So, um, um, so idea one, and this this kind of mask this kind of masks what the real important idea was. But um, think um, if page um, let's say page two links to um, page one. And the uh, link says um, hi, then um, page one is 
um, likely um, about pi. Right? So, so if there are other pages which are linking to a certain page and, and have the link says pi on it, and you say, do you want to read more about pi, or follow this link, then, then this, this page that is linked to is more likely to be about pi. Right? So, so they looked at the, at the href, at, at the HTML link tag, and there's a word inside of it, and they use that word. Right? So, th so this was, you know, s s this idea was trying to be floated around to these other things. And because you have this crawler, and it got from one page to the other, you could also keep track of this information. So you didn't have to just look at the page, you could see some of which pages actually linked to it. Okay? Um, so, th so this was, this was kind of useful, but then you could, you could also build a lot of other pages that, that, that link to this page, right? Uh, uh, with your name in it, right? So, or with the name Pi in it, right? So if you wanted to build a page that when you search for Pi, your page would come up, you build a lot of other pages that's, um, that link to this page um, and link to it with the word pi. So you can't just use this. You need a second idea, which was, um, um, which is a little bit harder to understand by itself, but it's really the, the, the important one, is that, um, so, um, so also page two, needs um, to, to be um, important. So, so important is, is not, um, this isn't something I've well defined, right? But if you have some random web page that only has a link to, to, the, to, the, uh, um, to your page, then it's probably not a very important web page. You want this to be, if you have, if you're getting a link from, if you're getting a link from Yahoo, and they have a section about Pi, then, then this probably says that um, this page two, um, or, the, or this, this page one which you're being linked to, is important because it's, it's a good page about pi because some important page said that it was. Right? So you're more likely to trust other web pages than the individual web pages. You somehow need to say how important this web page is in, in order how much you trust it. Right, so you see the, the kind of difference here. You can't just have a lot of links to it, but you also need these links to be coming from someplace important. Okay, so now this seems, this seems more difficult. If I knew if page two was important, um, and I wanted to make this completely automatic, right, then, uh, um, then this would be really easy, right? I could just start at page two, see what it linked to, and weight these a lot, right? Um, but how do I know how important page two is, right? And how do I, and if, if I link to page one, I also want it to, if I can define some sense of importance, I also want page one to be important some, right? So, um, so how, do you, how do you understand the notion of importance? Okay, so, um, um, what the big idea was is that um, the web is a graph, right? Um, right. So, so it's a graph with vertices and edges, and the vertices are all of the web pages, and the edges are the links, right? So. Um, um, so it's a directed graph. So you have a, if you have a page that's, that's Yahoo, it has a lot of out degree nodes pointing to a lot of web pages. Right? So those pages are connected to Yahoo if, if they have an edge coming from Yahoo to that page. And then a lot of other pages will link to Yahoo because they say, um, this is a great place to find stuff. A lot of people would end up, end up linking to that in their web page. Um, a lot of people are, you know, are still, I don't know if this is as much as before, but people are, would, would build their own web page and then have a bunch of links at the bottom because they're too lazy to type in yahoo.com. They would rather just open up their own web page and click on a link. So a lot of people would link to Yahoo. Right? So Yahoo was a very important page because a lot of people um, were linking to it. But this doesn't really 
formalize this notion, right? So, so what is the right way to formalize how important a, a web page is? Well, you can take the ratio of the incoming links and the outgoing links. Uh, and you can also have like a manual list saying cnn.com and bbc.com are important ones and if they link to you, then it has more weight. So you can assign weights to the links by domain name. Um, so these are good ideas, and we'll come back to this sense of some pages are more important, but this is also kind of hard to measure, and it's not very scalable. I mean, this is actually, this whole model of Yahoo, if these are just the important pages, then just link to those. Why provide a search engine? What about the traffic? Is <clears throat> where people spend their time? Oh, good, so where do people spend their time? But is Google able to measure this? So a, a lot of companies want to know this information, and there are companies which just try and measure the web. Um, they, and most of these, a lot of the internet companies don't really trust them. They trust them, or they, they talk about them more if they tend to rank their company higher. They say that there, there are multiple competing services that try and say, how much traffic does this web page get? And, uh, and, but no one knows how to verify this. So one point, I, I did an internship at um, at Yahoo, and there were there were two services that said how many page hits um, did Yahoo get every day, and they only talked about the one that ranked theirs really high. They didn't talk about the other. One. So I, I, I'm not saying one was right, one was wrong, but there's there's no it's very hard to measure. Now, if it, so, so do you ever have if you ever accidentally or maybe on purpose download like the search bar on the top of your page? Yeah. Right. So so this is this installs a cookie in your browser and sends back to whoever Microsoft or um, whoever owns that, you know, made that, that search bar, tells you which pages, um, um, tells them which pages you went to. And this gives them a lot of information. That's, it's a really annoying thing, um, or at least I think it is, it's using up your real estate. But they, and, and they realize it's annoying, right? They don't want to alienate you, but it's worth it to them because they get such a rich understanding of which web pages you actually go to. Um, and this is very hard to actually figure out. Um, and even like small scale like user studies, you know, this, this doesn't really capture. It. It's a very, you know, heavy tail process. So you need, really need to get a lot of data to understand. So, um, so you, you can't, so it's, if, if you're able to know that, um, which pages are actually traveled to, that would be great, right? But, if, but actually if you're something like Yahoo, you drive a lot of their traffic. Yahoo was very important in the, in the mid-90s because 